we have seen uh, Holden model or the churn insulator which is characterized by a non-zero churn number and uh, the insulator is characterized by a uh, time reversal symmetry broken. There is no time reversal symmetry in the system which is induced by the uh, second neighbor complex hopping which we have uh, mentioned and here's this picture of Holden. And um, later on uh, in about 2004-2005, Kane and Milley, uh, this is uh, Charlie Kane and Eugene Milley, they have um, understood that uh, it is possible to recover the time reversal invariance and uh, uh, this would create another uh, insulator which is called as a quantum spin hall insulator. In fact, uh, what they have realized was very profound that uh, if we include the spin degrees of freedom uh, in the system, actual spin degrees of freedom, not the pseudo spinner that we have been talking about so far, then uh, it is possible to regain back the lost time reversal symmetry. Uh, of course, the system would not have a churn number or it is not, it will not be called as churn insulator, but it will be another kind of insulator which is known as the quantum spin hall insulator, which is what we will see. So, uh, Ken and Milley, they proposed this model which uh, is known as the Ken Milley model and um, these are uh, the papers uh, that you see that uh, which were published in 2005 in the physical review letters uh, by both Ken and Milley. The one of them is called as the quantum spin hall effect in graphene which they realized that uh, uh, because along with the spin orbit coupling term there is uh, the Hamiltonian respects all symmetries of that of graphene. So, it is quite likely that it will be there in graphene and um, then they wrote another paper in the same year or rather this paper came earlier than, than the next one uh, which says uh, about a Z2 topological order and the quantum spin hall effect. So, a Z2 index or the Z2 topological invariant is the new topological invariant for this system. Uh, which is distinct from the churn number because in this system the churn number is 0 because uh, the system has time reversal invariance. Okay? So, this is what we are going to study which goes by the name quantum uh, spin hall insulator. Okay? So, um, here of course, as I said earlier that uh, the time reversal invariance is not lost, it is uh, in fact preserved in the systems and the system will show protected boundary modes or edge modes uh, very similar to the, uh, the Holden model or the churn insulator, but here uh, it will be spin resolved modes and uh, they are uh, called as a helical edge modes uh, that are present in the system. And as I said that. Uh, uh, they will be uh, characterized by a Z2 invariant. So, let me write down these two points. Uh, so, helical uh, edge states that are spin resolved and characterized by a Z2 invariant. and we will see what the Z2 invariant is and um, we will of course, uh, stick to a simpler uh, situation in which the system has inversion symmetry and uh, uh, there the calculation of the Z2 invariant is um, easier uh, than of course, uh, without a translation or the rather the inversion symmetry in the problem. Okay? So, uh, the main ingredient of this uh, kind of quantum spin hall insulator is uh, what is known as the spin orbit coupling. Okay. And uh, in the most simple way that one can understand is that uh, the angular momentum and the spin are coupled. And uh, if the scenario is like this, then we know that uh, neither of L or S are good quantum numbers and one actually talks about J which is a good quantum number in this case and one can find out the eigenvalue of this L dot S operator in the eigen basis which is spanned by uh, you know J, J1, J2, M1, M2 and so on and so forth. <coughs> okay? So, uh, the spin orbit coupling uh, is uh, as I said it is an important ingredient in this problem and um, 
the, this uh, a special kind of spin orbit coupling is what we shall be um, talking about. It is called as a Rashba spin orbit coupling and it has a, a special place in graphene because uh, graphene is two dimensional which has uh, the inversion symmetry uh, about the z axis is broken and um, Rashba is a, a very possible candidate uh, in, in graphene. So, uh, we will be talking about that and uh, so what kind of spin orbit coupling are we talking about here? We are talking about a spin orbit coupling, let us write down a, a Hamiltonian which uh, looks like uh, we may use a different notation, but right now we are using a lambda SO which is nothing but that second neighbor hopping T2 that we have talked about in the Holden model and then there is a sigma z and then there is a tau z and then there is a sz okay? uh, and we will actually derive this term a part of it is already derived like this term is there in the Holden model. Uh, we just have gotten uh, this sz extra. Now, the sigma z just to remind you is the sublattice uh, degrees of freedom. tau z is uh, a valley degree of freedom and S z is a real spin. So, spin degree of freedom. So, S z equal to uh, plus or minus 1 for a spin half particle. So, uh, why this uh, term respects uh, time reversal symmetry? it respects time reversal symmetry because under time reversal symmetry the uh, tau z changes sign that is uh, one is taken from the k valley to the k prime valley or k Dirac point to the k prime Dirac point. So, uh, that changes sign. So, under time reversal this uh, tau z goes to minus tau z and we will see in a while that s z also goes to minus s z. So, an up spin goes to down spin and sigma z does not change sign because that is the sub lattice degree of freedom and under time reversal it does not change sign. So, uh, there is no net let me also write that uh, sigma z does not change sign. Uh, so, there is no net sign change and this is the main uh, thing about this uh, quantum spin hall insulators and uh, uh, we now have taken into account the, the real spin degrees of freedom. Okay? So, if you take this uh, Sz equal to uh, 1 and minus 1 separately, so plus 1 and Sz equal to minus 1. So, this is uh, one uh, copy of the Holden model and this belongs to another copy of the Holden model, okay? such that the churn number or the Hall conductivity will be a plus e square by h and minus e square by h that is equal to 0. But nevertheless, one has um, a quantity called as the spin current which is defined as um, J s which is equal to h over 2 e uh, j up minus j down. So, this uh, will be non-zero and uh, we will have a sigma x y a spin hall let us write it with a s this is equal to a non-zero e over 2 pi. So, it is a it is a distinct topological insulator. Compared to Holden model and 2D electron gas. Uh, we have used this um, abbreviation several times in presence of an external magnetic field. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, this is uh, the new thing that is going to come and it is a new form of a topological insulator, the second kind so to say uh, after the ones that we have seen for either uh, 2D electron gas in a, an external field uh, or a Holden model where a time reversal symmetry is broken by a second neighbor complex hopping. Okay. So, uh, in order to understand this better, uh, let me talk about the time reversal symmetry in a spinful model. Okay. I mean spinful model means a Hamiltonian that includes uh, spin, real spin or let me write it as uh, in presence of spin. Let me remind you that uh, the time reversal symmetry operator uh, without uh, any spin present in the problem is the uh, complex conjugation operator. So, without spin uh, we will write uh, for this time reversal symmetry or symmetric system as TRS. So, without spin uh, TRS operator is simply K which is the complex conjugation. Okay. So, we can write it with a slightly tilted T uh, which is nothing but equal to K, but with spin this is not sufficient. And let me uh, tell you that why it is not sufficient. Okay. And uh, the reason that it is not sufficient is that uh, because uh, this complex conjugation operator uh, will act on the uh, sigma x, uh, let me write it with just k acting on sigma x uh, will give sigma x, it will not change its sign k acting on sigma y will give you a minus sigma y because sigma y is complex and k acting on sigma z uh, will give you a sigma z without changing its sign. But why do we want uh, it to change sign? So, let us go back to that uh, the spin orbit coupling and and which is written as L dot S. Now, uh, under this time reversal, uh, L goes to minus L and S goes to minus S, so that there is no change in sign. Now, you see that uh, since we are talking about spin half particles, we have resorted to the Pauli matrices. Now, you see that uh, both sigma x and sigma z do not change sign, but we want them to change sign. So, uh, there is uh, some other operator that we need to think about, which will give us a change in sign for all of sigma x, sigma y and sigma z. And that can be done in the following sense. I am drawing a, a coordinate axis, but this is in the spin space. So, this is say x this is y and this is z. So, this is actually S x, S y and S z if you like. And then if I do a rotation by uh, pi about the y axis, uh, then x become minus x and z becomes minus z. So, uh, rotation by pi uh, x becomes minus x and uh, z becomes minus z and y remains as y because it is a rotation about the y axis. Now, this is as I said that this is in the spin space which means that uh, such a rotation will make sigma x to minus sigma x and sigma z to minus sigma z and will not do anything to sigma y, but sigma y by virtue of being complex uh, will change the sign under the uh, these uh, complex conjugation. So, uh, we are looking uh, for an operator that uh, does this rotation about the y axis by pi. And uh, if you remember the quantum mechanics angular momentum of quantum mechanics such a rotation is written as, um, so this rotation operator is written as exponential say for example, a minus i pi 
s y by h cross okay and uh, now the time reversal operator will be this into k okay and since we are talking about um, this um, Pauli matrices or other spin half objects we can make a simplification that s y is equal to h cross by 2 sigma y and or rather all components will uh, follow this relation that is s x equal to h cross by 2 sigma x and s z equal to h cross by 2 sigma z. So, if we do that then um, this complex conjugation operator will be like exponential minus i pi by 2 uh, sigma y okay? uh, and then of course, we will have to write down this. So, let me deal with this uh, for the moment and um, uh, this is easy to um, work out. So, this will uh, we can write this as a cosine of uh, pi by 2 sigma y and a minus i sin pi by 2 uh, sigma y. So, let me show how uh, this simplification is done. So, um, cosine pi by 2 sigma y is equal to uh, so cosine of uh, pi by 2 uh, sigma y uh, is equal to 1 uh, and a minus uh, these pi by 2 sigma y uh, whole square. There is a um, half factor here which is a 1 by 2 factorial and then there is a 1 by 4 factorial and pi by 2 sigma y uh, to the power 4 and so on. So, there is a plus minus plus minus. Uh, now, this can be written as uh, if you remember the properties of the Pauli matrix then this sigma y square equal to 1 and that gives you that uh, sigma y cube is equal to sigma y and so on so forth. Okay? So, uh, each even power of sigma y will give us 1 and each odd power will give us just simply sigma y. Okay? So, that tells you that this becomes equal to 1 minus uh, there is a 1 by 2 factorial and then there is a pi by 2 and so on so forth square. Uh, plus 1 by 4. So, it is a pi by 2 whole to the power 4 and so on and this is nothing but cosine of pi by 2 which is equal to 0. Okay? And uh, similarly, but the sine of uh, pi by 2 sigma y will have uh, these all the odd terms uh, which are there. So, this is equal to a pi by 2 uh, sigma y minus uh, 1 by 2 factorial pi by 2 sigma y cube and a plus uh, 1 by uh, not this 3 factorial I am sorry, uh, this 5 factorial um, pi by 2 sigma y whole to the power 5 and so on. Okay? So, this is nothing but equal to so, because your sigma uh, y cube is sigma y and there are sigma y. So, that sigma y into a sigma sin pi by 2 sigma y which uh, gives you. So, this uh, operator is uh, exponential minus i pi by 2 sigma y is nothing but minus i the sin pi by 2 equal to 1. So, it is minus i sigma y and that tells you that this time reversal operator for a spinful case which is what we wanted to derive is nothing but a minus sigma y uh, and a k. Okay? So, that complex conjugation will be there. So, this is um, a quite um, a known. Um, so, that is the operator there and, and so on. Uh, now, what do we do with this in the sense that how is it useful and uh, what are the consequences of uh, time reversal symmetry in a spinful model. And uh, a priori the consequences are quite significant. It gives you uh, what is called as a Kramer's degeneracy. Okay. So, let us see what Kramer's degeneracy is. All right. So, uh, now uh, we have of course written down that this is equal to a minus i sigma y k uh, 
if you take a, a square of that then it is equal to minus i square and sigma y square equal to 1 and k square of course equal to uh, 1 as well because you do twice complex conjugation it comes back. So, this is equal to minus 1. Now, this is something very important that in a spinless system uh, where there is no spin uh, tau square equal to 1 or these time reversal t square equal to 1 for a spinless system. Now, this minus 1 actually has a lot of interesting thing to go along with and let me see that and how does it lead to the degeneracy. So, what happens is that uh, is suppose uh, if uh, psi is an eigenfunction of a Hamiltonian with energy E, well this Hamiltonian is TRS invariant that is time reversal symmetry invariant with energy E, uh, then T psi is also another uh, eigenfunction or rather uh, T psi is actually uh, perpendicular to or orthogonal to this, it is also another eigenfunction with the same energy. And this degeneracy is called as a Kramer's degeneracy. So, uh, how do we see that, that this T psi is uh, and what is the nature of T psi? T psi is, um, is a perpendicular or orthogonal to this. So, you, you take an um, inner product of psi and T psi. So, this is just the T is written with a slight bit of uh, you know curvature uh, if I forget that uh, you carry on with your notation. So, this is equal to uh, a T square psi uh, because uh, so T psi okay uh, T square psi because T uh, you uh, do this time reversal twice and should come back to the psi. And, um, so, this is nothing but uh, a minus psi because t square is equal to minus psi and t psi and this is equal to minus of psi and t psi and, and now this cannot be possible unless uh, psi and t psi uh, is equal to 0 because uh, if you take this the, the last term uh, on this side then it becomes twice of this and then so that means that uh, I mean two two cannot be zero. So this psi and t psi are orthogonal. Okay, so this is one of the important uh, implication of the time reversal symmetry in a spinful system that they are orthogonal to each other, but they have the same energy, and this is called as Kramer's degeneracy. So this is Kramer's. And the psi and um, T psi are called as Kramer's doublets. All right, so let me uh, come back to this uh, band theory uh, that is uh, block states. Uh, so let us talk about the block states which. Uh, uh, has um, you know k as a good quantum number uh, of course the system has uh, crystalline uh, symmetries and so on so um, if you consider a block state which means that we are talking about a psi k uh, with a spin sigma uh, this is equal to a exponential i k dot r and uh, u k sigma where sigma is a spin and uh, sigma can be up or down uh, this is according to Bloch's theorem. So, uh, this uh, contains the periodicity of the potential and uh, there is a, a free wave or uh, there is a plane wave uh, term there. Now, if I uh, operate this psi k sigma then what happens is that so I will have to operate it by i sigma y k 
on this I exponential i k dot r uh, u k sigma and um, so uh, this k will act on this and will make this exponential minus i k r the plane wave part and uh, we can write this as uh, so exponential minus i uh, k dot r uh, and then uh, we have of course a minus i sigma y uh, u k sigma and now you see that this can be written as exponential of i uh, minus k uh, dot r and then the job of this uh, i sigma y will be to uh, invert the spin. So, if there is a sigma spin then there will be a sigma bar spin where sigma if sigma is up then the sigma bar will be down ok. And because uh, this looks like a minus k, so this becomes equal to a minus k and a sigma bar and the bar. So, sigma uh, equal to up, sigma bar equal to down or vice versa. So, this is equal to uh, uh, exponential minus i k dot r and a u minus k sigma bar. Okay, so, that is what happens when you apply uh, psi k sigma on this. So, which implies that there is of course a degeneracy such that E k up is equal to E minus k down and this is called as a Kramer's degeneracy. Okay. So, there is a degeneracy of these up and down states. Uh, for one given value of k, uh, but uh, if it is plus k for the up spin then it is minus k for the down spin or vice versa. Uh, and this of course has uh, we know that this has uh, a lot of uh, implications on uh, the topological insulators. So, what it means is the following that uh, let me show this uh, just a picture. So, uh, we will sort of see it like this. There is a uh, So, I am just drawing parabolic bands for uh, up and down spins, uh, they could be I mean you can interchange them does not matter. So, this is E as a function of k and uh, you see that at k equal to 0 they sort of uh, touch each other, but the degeneracy is here. So, there is these two points let me uh, use a color to mark them. So, this point and these points are degenerate but they correspond to two diametrically opposite points in the brill 1 zone and that is where the degeneracy comes. So, for up spin it is at a k, uh, well we have done it uh, just the other way around. Let me uh, change the spin indices uh, that way. So, this is down and this is up. So, this is that k. So, E at a k is degenerate with uh, E at a minus k. E at k for an up spin is uh, degenerate with E at a uh, a minus k for the down spin and this gives the rigidity of the edge modes in this particular spin full system or the Ken Willey model that we are going to discuss in just a while. Okay. And so, the back scattering from a state a k up state to a minus k down state are forbidden and that is why these uh, edge states are uh, these these are robust states. So, uh, let me uh, come to this model. The model is, um, is a very intuitive model and which has been introduced by Ken and Millie and that is their name uh, that appears in the model and so on. Uh, this is the usual tight binding term that we all are familiar with and we have been seeing this in the context of graphene several times. It is uh, just a CI uh, sigma CI dagger CJ. Uh, we have not written any uh, spin index here because it does not matter it is a spin polarized term. Uh, which is just uh, uh, the tight binding kinetic energy of graphene. Now, this is what we have done. Uh, just one small change that has occurred is that there is a sigma sigma uh, prime term uh, where sigma sigma prime can be up or down and uh, this lambda SO was nothing but T2 in the Holden model. So, Holden model this is exactly the Holden term, but rather two copies of the Holden term, one corresponding to spin up uh, with a flux which is given by pi by 2 
and the down spin corresponds to a, a flux which has exactly equal and opposite magnitude which is equal to minus pi by 2. And this is of course, the term that we are familiar with that is the inversion symmetry breaking term and the term that uh, was there in graphene because if we had sort of different chemical potentials uh, at the two carbon atom sites uh, which are uh, say which are analogous to the hexagonal boron nitride. So, that is the term which is inversion symmetry breaking term. This term without the sigma sigma prime there uh, it would have been just the, uh, the normal Holden model, but now you see that uh, this part is taken into account that is the spin uh, S z is taken into account and uh, they are taking sort of components of that and this is of course, the chirality. Okay. So, that tells you that uh, uh, if the second neighbor hopping is um, clockwise then it has a positive sign or if it is anti clockwise it has a negative sign and uh, this we have taken the flux to be exactly equal to pi by 2 and that is what is done excepting when uh, we wanted to generate the phase diagram which is flux versus the uh, these uh, this term. This term means the with a lambda v term which is uh, the mass term that opens up a gap inversion symmetry breaking term. So, it is basically two copies of the Holden model. Okay. So, this is uh, you know Holden model with uh, flux pi by 2 for the spin up and uh, for uh, spin down it is minus pi by 2. So, this Ken Milli term, so this is called as a Ken Milli term. Okay. Uh, this Ken Milli term is actually up up Holden uh, Hamiltonian uh, for phi equal to pi by 2, phi is the flux which is uh, due to the you know. So, uh, this uh, flux is uh, exponential i phi, I mean it is called as a Holden flux, but this is that term that uh, you know comes uh, with the T2 term. So, that a phi equal to pi by 2. Uh, then it becomes equal to i t 2 and so on i t 2 or minus i t 2. So, in the absence of any Rajpa kind of spin orbit coupling term uh, the Ken Milli Hamiltonian looks like the h up and h down and so on. So, it obeys time reversal symmetry how uh, that is not difficult to understand we have uh, done that here. So, this was um, the term. Uh, so, lambda s o sigma z and uh, tau z and s z. So, this was there in the Holden model. So, this was Holden term uh, which was time reversal uh, symmetry broken term and this s z has returned uh, or recovered the time reversal symmetry. So, um, uh, now what can happen is that one can also add a term which is called as a Rajpa term. So, we will uh, sort of detail about this later. Uh, the Rajpur term is written as i lambda r and uh, then there is a c i dagger and then there is a sigma cross d vector. Uh, so, this d vector is basically uh, some uh, vector. It, it just looks like a vector kind of coupling, but then you see that we have taken a z component and of course, that there is a lambda v term etcetera. So, what one can uh, get is that now uh, with this term there. Uh, one actually gets the spin filtered edge states in the problem, okay? uh, so which means that at each edge you will have a up and a down the spin states or edge modes uh, corresponding to up and down. So, at each edge there are two spins up spin and down spin and, uh, and, and so on. So, these are called as a helical edge states. Okay. So, a uh, quantum spin hall uh, uh, effect uh, can be observed in the system and the system will show a quantum spin hall conductance of E over 2 pi, uh, but will have 0 charge hall conductance for the reason that we have already said. For having a hall conductivity you need to have the time reversal symmetry uh, broken uh, for the charge hall, the usual hall effect that we talk about. So, this is the uh, full tight binding Kane Milli Hamiltonian in the momentum space. Uh, these are the diagonal term which are uh, something like second neighbor hopping or on site potential and uh, these are the kinetic energy nearest neighbor kinetic energy terms and so on. 
So each one of the terms are written carefully here. There is a full tight binding model. So this tight binding model has a term, you know, uh, I mean uh, this one in the low energy limit. this uh, Hamiltonian uh, looks like other than uh, so this is only the Kane Milli term that looks like this lambda SO uh, sigma Z tau Z and SZ okay and this is what we have discussed. If you do all these um, uh, expansion uh, then uh, this is of course the kinetic energy term uh, or rather the near tight binding nearest neighbor tight binding term and so on and these are the term which is coming from the Ken Milli term. So, this is the Ken Milli uh, term and this is the Rashpa term. Okay. And um, this uh, Rashpa term does not uh, uh, do anything to the time reversal symmetry. Heuristic argument has been uh, already uh, put forward uh, there uh, that is uh, when you have a L dot S kind of couplet both L and S change their signs and um, one does not have any net sign emerging out of that. So, this is uh, a time reversal invariant Hamiltonian and this Hamiltonian uh, now uh, had to be we will uh, sort of discuss about uh, a little more about the Hamiltonian. But uh, before that uh, let me uh, show you the calculation of the Z2 invariant. So, given that it is a 4 by 4 Hamiltonian uh, in the K space it can easily be diagonalized in order to calculate the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And once when we get the uh, eigenvalues and the eigenvectors uh, we know that uh, we can calculate the topological invariant. And uh, let us uh, just think that you know let us take two occupied band corresponding to two spins which are psi i and psi j uh, these are the occupied band wave functions and the overlap of the time reverse block states are uh, calculated using this formula. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what is important is that uh, one has to calculate this thing which is nothing but minus i sigma y k which is what we have shown and uh, they have to be calculated between the a two occupied band wave function and what turns out that, that there is some epsilon function and then uh, the Fafian uh, of uh, which is a function of k. Now, this Fafian I will just come in a moment what is a Fafian, but this Fafian is 0 at k and k prime points and while at the 4 symmetry points uh, that is these k and the k prime points this Fafian is equal to 0 once one calculates this this matrix element this matrix element will come in the form of you know I mean this will have numbers and so on and this numbers uh, for a 2 by 2 uh, will uh, give me a Puffian there. And uh, so, this is uh, it 0 at the k and the k prime points. In fact, if you uh, calculate it um, over this uh, entire you know uh, rhombus which is that red uh, triangle plus the black triangle uh, then the Puffian would come out to 0 and the topological invariant will not be there. Okay. But uh, if you calculate it only over half the triangle which is uh, denoted by red uh, which are the C1, C2, C3 uh, then it has a value equal to plus 1. So, it is actually defined as uh, the Z2 is defined as 1 by 2 pi i and uh, these closed uh, contour integral over this red curve uh, C that is C1 plus C2 plus C3 and it is a dk uh, dot these the gradient of the log of this quantity. Uh, this is just taken for convergence by Ken and Milli, but uh, one can actually put that equal to 0 uh, it still works. Uh, so, it is a log of the Fafian that is important. Now, what is Fafian? So, if you take a 2 by 2 Hamiltonian Fafian is just the uh, that off diagonal element. Okay. So, this is the off diagonal element and for a 3 by 3 Hamiltonian if you have such a, a matrix structure then the Fafian is 0 and for a 4 by 4 matrix with the diagonal elements to be equal to 0. So, this is actually a purely off diagonal matrix all the mat the diagonal elements are strictly uh, equal to 0. So, uh, this is equal to A into F uh, minus B into E plus C into D and so on. So, uh, but of course, we are interested in only uh, these Puffian which is of a 2 by 2 matrix.
So, we need to do this integral, this integral and this integral needs to be, so this is a C1 fx kx ky dkx and fy dkx ky dky and so on and then over this C2, so this C1 and then C2 and then C3, so this along C1 and then C2 and along C3 the same kind of integrals that will be there. Now, I am just showing you uh, integral 1 that is I1 and for I1 uh, you cannot do this integral uh, simply because um, there is a, a kx and ky dependency and these integrand of course is a function of kx and ky. So, along C1 and C2 it is slightly uh, you know non-trivial because of this uh, kx and ky dependencies, but along C3 of course, your uh, kx is constant and it is only ky that changes. So, if you uh, take C1 and the equation of this line that goes through this point gamma through m1, it is nothing but ky equal to kx by root 3. So, uh, in this integrand that is I1 integrand, we have fx which is a function of kx and ky. So, this is actually kx and kx by root 3 and um, the integral has to be done, this has been found out carefully that this is that gamma point is 0, 0 and uh, the x coordinate of, uh, of this point uh, here that is let us call it as O A B and so on. So, it is a O A B O uh, integral. So, this integral is that you see here is uh, over this O A B O. Okay. So, that is the uh, thing that needs to be uh, substituted here and then this integral is from 0 to 6 pi by 3 root 3, this has been found as 6 pi by 3 root 3 and so on and if we substitute uh, kx equal to uh, root 3 ky that is what the equation tells you and then this becomes equal to root 3 ky and ky over dky and dk ky goes from 0 to 2 pi over 3 and so on. So, these are the, the double integral is calculated in two steps. So, this is step number 1 in which first you do the kx integral and then you do the ky integral okay. and similarly one has to do the uh, c2 over i2 and for i3 only dky is non-zero because uh, kx is constant. Uh, so, kx is fixed at a value 0, so we need to only calculate this. So, now you calculate over this c1 contour and uh, this is that C2 contour and this is that C3 contour and then you add integral over C1 plus C2 plus C3 and that should give you a topological invariant. Okay? And this is exactly the plot that one gets uh, from this. You see that there is a dark uh, blue line which is um, like a contour of this uh, enclosed region and uh, this uh, blue line, the dark blue line that represents a gap closing scenario for this Ken Milley model, which means that uh, there is everywhere on that uh, plot or on that line contour, uh, the gap is equal to 0 at, uh, at the Dirac points. Okay? And um, uh, the gap is non-zero only inside in the sky blue regime, okay? this uh, sky blue uh, place or these inside this is the the z2 invariant calculated using the formula that we had given above. So, this is equal to 1 and it vanishes outside. So, z2 is equal to 0 here and z2 equal to 1 here and uh, there is a blue line that separates. So, uh, the topological phase transition occurs uh, from the invariant being uh, 1 inside or in, in the enclosed region and it is 0 outside uh, in the outside region. Okay. So, how do we know that it is a topological uh, or it has edge states, it is not a normal insulator and uh, we do the same thing that we have done earlier, uh, we take a zigzag edge um, ribbon uh, or ribbon with a zigzag edge and uh, well one can do also an armchair which is um, a little different and I believe that one had to uh, or one has to take a larger system, uh, but uh, now you write down the Hamiltonian according to the hopping, all the hoppings that we have uh, between uh, 
red to blue and red to red and blue to blue and so on and so forth. Okay? And um, uh, if you want uh, more details on this, there is a very recent paper 2023 uh, who have calculated there is an explicit derivation of the helical edge modes for the Ken Milli model. And uh, so, there is elaborate paper that one can uh, actually look at. We have calculated the same things. Now, you see that we see the spin filtered edge modes. So, the spin filtered edge modes of the Ken Milli insulator are shown for two different values of lambda v. So, lambda v equal to some value and lambda v equal to some other value uh, which are taken as 0.1 t and 0.4 t. Remember that 0.1 in unit of t means the in unit of the nearest neighbor hopping and that is a little larger value. And uh, just to uh, wanted to make sure that 1 corresponds to the topological phase, this is the topological and this is the trivial. Because you see there are edge modes coming out from the conduction to the valence band and they are cutting the Fermi energy at these green dots, the points that you see there, which are uh, named as PQRS. So, all these PQRS are here. So, at one edge we have P and S, the other edge we have Q and R and of course, there is no edge modes here. Uh, so, there is a bulk gap. So, this acts like a, a band insulator. The, the figure on your right is a band insulator and the figure on your left is a topological insulator. So, uh, this thing, this is chosen because we have chosen plot that is here, that is inside this uh, sky blue region. So, inside the sky blue region, we make sure that it is a topological insulator with uh, spin filtered edge modes so, the, and the topological invariant is equal to 1, while on the right figure which corresponds to lambda v equal to 0.4 t. Uh, which we have taken uh, this thing equal to 0. So, the lambda v equal to 0 0.4 is somewhere here, somewhere here and so on and of course, your lambda r values such that it is z 2 equal to 0. So, in the z 2 equal to 0 case, we do not have any spin filtered edge modes and uh, just to remind you that in this uh, situation, uh, we have taken the k x to be a good quantum number and k y is not a good quantum number. So, the Hamiltonian is written in the y direction is written in the real space. Uh, so, the size of the Hamiltonian depends on how many unit cells we take in the y direction and uh, in the x direction of course, it is an infinite. So, the, this is called as a semi infinite uh, nano ribbon which is what we have talked about earlier. And uh, we see these edge modes and these edge modes are cartoon of that is has been shown earlier here that you see that these are the edge modes, uh, these red and the, the light green, they correspond to downspin and upspin respectively at each of the edges and that is exactly similar to what we get here, you see. So, uh, these correspond to the p correspond to the down, so p corresponds to up, s corresponds to down, q corresponds to uh, down and R corresponds to up. Okay? So, this is exactly the picture uh, that we have shown, um, it is been reproduced using numerical uh, simulations by us. So, this to summarize, you know, this represents a completely new kind of topological insulator, uh, which is marked by a new uh, or a different topological invariant. It has time reversal symmetry. Uh, the states have uh, you know Kramer's degeneracy. So, these uh, Kramer's degeneracy is what uh, we are talking about. We have talked about that there are up and down states which are uh, degenerate. So, these uh, up and down states at the k values, you see that, uh, that there are these um, p and s are uh, degenerate states at uh, you know, but they are deferred by a momenta which is uh, on I diametrically opposite uh, parts of the Brillouin zone. I mean, they differ by the, uh, the, the momentum there and so on. And then uh, you also have these other uh, set of things uh, uh, which uh, differ by these um, momenta across the Brillouin zone. Okay? So, this is a, a different kind of scenario where uh, spin orbit coupling uh, plays an important role. Uh, we have talked about two kinds of spin orbit coupling. One is a Holden term uh, with a 
spin term uh, added to it or rather you know it is uh, a spinful Holden term uh, which is also uh, sometimes called as a intrinsic spin orbit coupling and uh, the Rajpa spin orbit coupling has been added both respect time reversal symmetry system has time reversal symmetry and there are instead of chiral modes there are spin filtered edge modes which are there present in the system. So, we have been able to show another uh, topological uh, insulator or topological insulating state uh, which is different than the ones that we have seen earlier uh, either in the context of 2D electron gas in a magnetic field or uh, the Holden model. I will stop here. Thank you. Mm -hmm.